All right. Hey, folks, we're going to try this thing one more time. Uh, I thought I would uh, not have any problems at all, but uh, because we just checked out my microphone about uh, five minutes ago and everything was working fine. So anyhow, let's move on. Uh, Welcome, everybody, to the virtual Narcon session on the adjustable tube mandrel. Mandrel. Uh, You're going to learn today how to make it inexpensively with common items and then see how easy it is to use to create outer tubes, sleeves, couplers, motor tubes, and more on the same mandrel. And I'm going to switch back to me. I hope everybody can see me. Um, This is going to be done in two parts. Uh, the first part will be about the adjustable mandrel. And the second part, we're going to make a fiberglass airframe tube. Uh, I will say that the tube that I'm going to make is a 30 millimeter light competition uh, altitude airframe. Uh, so I'll get into more about the fiberglass and different fiberglasses, but this technique can be used for incredibly light competition tubes, as well as uh, high power, uh, heavy, strong um, uh, tubes, uh, couplers and things like that. Um, So it it will work on uh, all kinds of different projects that you might have. Uh, As you saw when I started with, there's an overhead camera. I'll switch to that. Uh, when I um, start working on uh, the mandrels and so forth. All right. Well, let's get into, oh, one other thing. Put all your questions in the Q&A. At the end, I will uh, have some time and put uh, uh, bring those questions back up, and we'll see if we can uh, answer them all. All right. What is the adjustable mandrel? Well, uh lots rockets consist primarily of round things do they have to be absolutely round in what we do no we're not nasa we're not trying to uh, put somebody on mars so uh round is a relative term uh and when people use uh dedicated mandrels such as this it says tool, tool steel rod, uh, the proper diameter to lay up a, uh, a motor tube. It's one size, it's for one task and one task only. Um, with the uh, need to make a, tubes that may be different from what's available then you certainly should turn to uh, custom tubes that you make yourself. Uh, And as your projects advance, your need is going to grow even more. Well, I don't see much use in um, purchasing dedicated steel tool steel uh, mandrels for every single size that I want. So uh, I decided that I was going to take it a cheap way. I also did not like having to use release spray um, on the mandrels to get after you uh, uh, made the tube, then you had to get that off of the uh, mandrel as well. And that's messy, uh, takes heat, uh, leaves a real waxy film inside and so forth. So there had to be a better way. So that's why I came up with uh, this process, and I've been using it now for probably about 30 years. Um, But what makes this so nice is this is an adjustable mandrel. If you can see the end of it, it's made out of a dowel rod and then covered with uh, masking tape to build it out to the size that you want. Um, so, uh, it consists of a core tube 
or a dowel rod, steel rod, tubing. Uh, this this uh, mandrel right here is made on a copper pipe. Um, so this gives us flexibility and the ability to change the diameter uh, of it. Um, and that, there is where the adjustable part comes from. The adjustable mandrel has a solid core, spiral tape wrapped until you build out to the diameter that you want. And then it's you. Then the great thing is wax paper. Wax paper goes around the mandrel. You work on top of the wax paper. And then once you're through, it just slides right off and you take the wax paper out of the tube. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, one of the nice things about uh, this mandrel is, uh, say this, this mandrel right here. It's a tube mandrel for an airframe. Once the airframe was made, and you'll see I've got paint on it and all, all kinds of things. Without the wax paper in there, you can put it back on the mandrel. I can. You can slide it back on the mandrel because you don't have the thickness of the wax paper. And it gives you a great way to work on the tube for drilling holes, for cutting it, uh, for sanding it, for painting it. Um, so the only difference was the wax paper. And that's gone now. So that gives us the ability to, uh, uh, to do things like that. Um, you can also easily adjust the diameter. That becomes important when you want to actually make an outer tube. And then you need a coupler or something that fits inside it and fits well and is precise. Uh, so simply by changing the number of wraps of wax paper, and then or the number of wraps of uh, wa uh, masking tape, then you can adjust the uh, uh, the diameter of your tube very precisely. Um, as you see in this mandrel, I used it to paint with. If I had gotten glue or epoxy or something like that on here, or there was got rough, they're easy to clean up. All you got to do is take that top layer of masking tape off and replace it. Um, so it's completely uh, uh, renewable. All righty. Well, I'm going to switch back to this camera overhead. And uh, let me clear a few of these things out of the way. And we will get started. Uh, by the way, this is a carbon fiberglass tube um, that was made on, on one of these mandrels using the same thing. Here's a larger tube, larger tubes, and there's the mandrel for uh, making that large tube. It's simply a PVC pipe, and I did put uh, uh, centering rings in it so that I could set it on the man on the uh, cradle and work on it. It's real important to be able to, to do that. And that's where I'm going next. Let's talk about a cradle. As you see, this cradle, um, you, you gotta have a cradle. You gotta have some, some way of putting your mandrel up and working on it. And turning it and doing all that is the way that you're going to be working on it. This is really, really difficult to do. Two end boards. This is three quarter inch uh, uh, pine. Cut a V in two ends. Put it together with a board at the bottom. And uh, I do put uh, a pin in each end so that as you're working on it, that doesn't happen. It doesn't fall out of the cradle. So putting that pin back in, and it keeps it from falling out. All right. Now, what if 
you needed a long tube. All right, this is a piston tube. Well, there's the mandrel for it. I don't know if you can, can't, can't even see the whole thing. All right. So what we can do is we make the cradle adjustable. That's simple to do too. I simply cut this baseboard in half, put an overboard on top. There's two screws right here for the long uh, extension. I remove those two screws. This screw moves down to here and the whole thing stretches out to four feet. Um, so one mandrel can, I mean, one uh, cradle can work for all kinds of uh, uh, different lengths mandrels. I would try to suggest that 24 inch mandrel is about the smallest that you want to build for. Even if you're using just this much of it, uh, then do that. Uh, you'll, you'll find occasion when you need uh, to make it much longer and so forth. Okay. How do we make this thing? Well, uh, I'm going to start out. That's a PVC pipe and masking tape. Um, the core is very strong. It's, it's thick walled um, PVC pipe. Uh, cost about 50 cents uh, at the hardware store. Uh, they even had them cut in two foot lengths for me. Uh, so uh, anyhow, um, in making the mandrel, as I said before, you want to pick any straight and it does need to be straight and as you see that rolls very straight and very nice uh it has to be straight strong so it won't bend or distort and you want the diameter to be about 75 thousand smaller than the final diameter that you want for the for your tube so if you take the uh, uh the tube size that you want and subtract uh, 75 to 100 thousandths uh, uh, off of it. That's about the size tube you want. But again, this is adjustable. So uh, I even have, and there can be various and sundry uh, layers. This one has about uh, six layers of masking tape on it. Uh, to build it out to the size that I needed. Um, so uh, what we want to do first is we want to build the uh, diameter of your uh, mandrel up. This is the, uh, this is probably the hardest part of all of this uh, because what we want to do is we want to spiral wrap masking tape around this tube and I usually start with a pretty good angle and start bringing it down and then I can start to see where the other layer is and I want to come right in beside it and I do not I do not want any overlap and there we go we're getting it started there is a little gap. I know you can't see this, but there is a little gap between the layers. Now that I know exactly the angle that I needed to start this at, I'll take my starter and I'll rewrap it right next to the uh, original. And once I do that, then just put that off. Now, you want to cover this completely. Sit in front of the TV, uh, whatever you want to do, and keep wrapping. You can stretch the tape uh, left or right uh, to keep it on track. Uh, I would try to make it a natural uh, pull so that you're not really stretching the tape, and it will go down pretty easily. Now, you can see where you are if you have a light and uh, that light will show you a shadow off of the tape. So as you're pulling it down, 
just make sure there's a little black line between the new layer you're lying down and the, the previous spiral before. And you just keep on doing that all the way. Um, then uh, when you come back to uh, start over, the second one is a lot easier because you simply find where the, the groove is uh, to begin with. Lay this halfway over it. And you've got another line down here so you can see where uh, the angle that you want. And then you can bring this around and start spiral wrapping the second layer. Put as many layers as you need on there to get it as um, uh, to the diameter that you that you want. Um, larger diameter tubes use larger or wider tapes. This one was made with two inch wide tape. This one that I was working on is three quarter inch wide. Uh, you can roughly say the width of the tape needs to be the diameter of the tube uh, as a general rule. Uh, and that makes it easier to, um, uh, to wrap this thing. Okay. So that's how you make this uh, uh, layer. Um, now, as you're building this up to the diameter, we're going to put wax paper on top of this too. So you want to stop the diameter of your mandrel about 40 thousandths short of the inside diameter uh, of the tube that you want to make. Okay. So um, that's how you make this mandrel. Simple made out of inexpensive materials. You could use a dowel rod. Uh, you can use virtually anything that is solid and round. And again, the round is a relative uh, term. Uh, we're not looking for scientific specs uh, for any of this. So that's how you make the mandrel. And I believe I'm still hanging on in on time. All right. Uh, well, we're going to concentrate on this mandrel right here because this is what we're going to make uh, the uh, tube out of. And um, let's prep this mandrel. And even though it's been painted, I've been using it to uh, work on uh, a finished airframe. What we want to do first, and I see this was a question, uh, how do I attach the wax, wax paper to the uh, mandrel tape? Just simply take this wax paper, which has already been sized and cut, so that it will give me, I think, about five layers of wax paper. But cut it to the right size. And you want it to be about four inches longer than the tube that you're going to be making. So you'll have some working room at each end. Um, once it's attached straight to the mandrel, roll it up. There's one, two. All right. So this is three layers of wax paper that I'm going to put on this mandrel. Now, how do I keep it on there? Because it's just going to come right back going to come right back open. All right. Real easy. The wax paper has wax on it. That's why it's called wax paper. You can burnish wax. So all I'm going to do here is just tighten it up, make sure it's tight on the mandrel. And then I'm going to burnish this edge down. It's just a burnishing tool. And I'll burnish back about a quarter of an inch. And then when I get to the edge, I'll burnish that down. And that's how you put the wax paper on. Really simple. 
if you're going to use uh, a lot of wax paper, uh, let's say, and I think the minimum, uh, because you've got to have at least about two layers of wax paper to keep epoxy from penetrating through it, uh, to a maximum of about 10 layers. Um, but if you're using a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, wraps of wax paper to build it out, then I will come in at the ends just so it doesn't come undone on me. And I'll put, I'll put masking tape on the ends. Uh, so anyhow, all right. Um, each layer. I forgot to tell you this. Each layer of masking tape on the mandrel will increase the diameter anywhere from eight to ten thousandths of an inch. Um, so if you are, uh, you know, building up to uh, add fifty thousandths uh, of an inch to the mandrel, then that probably means you're going to have five to six uh, layers of uh, masking tape. Wax paper is thinner. Wax paper adds about four thousandths uh, to the diameter. A half layer or half half of the of the uh, uh, complete revolution adds about two thousandths, a fourth a thousandth. So you can really tailor the diameter uh, based on the uh, amount of uh, masking tape you have on the mandrel and the uh, wax paper that's on that mandrel. Okay, um, well, we're going to lay up some fiberglass, but let's talk about fiberglass first. All kinds of different fiberglass. That's Kevlar. That's three ounce uh, or two ounce uh, fiberglass. Uh, this is half ounce which is a pain. We are going to be building a light um, airframe. So we uh, are going to be using this light uh, material. The heavier materials do not need sizing. But something like this, and today is not a real cold day, so there's not a lot of static electricity. But this thing will attract static electricity like nobody's business. How do you stop that? It's easy. For light materials, you do not have to do this on uh, the heavier materials. On light materials, and it's easier when you just cut it off the roll because everything is straight and nothing is crooked. See what a pain this is? All right, it's kind of down, it's kind of straight. And we're going to we're going to size it with hairspray. Everybody's heard of this, I'm sure. But it's real easy. That's it. That's all you need. You're looking for a hairspray that is uh, has a fine mist. An extra hole works pretty well. Um, so, uh, yes, I have been caught in the grocery store spraying hairspray to find out which has the, uh, uh, the lightest spray. Now, look at that piece. That piece is not going to lose its shape. Okay. So that's what you want to do first to prep your fiberglass. And you'll end up with fiberglass that's very usable. Uh, you can put this... Uh, on uh, and, and so forth. So um, we want to take and on this tube that we're going to make, we're going to hang this fiberglass and I see my sample. It was a little bit larger than I anticipated I would use. Um, but we're going to hang the fiberglass uh, on the mandrel. 
this is uh, one, two, three layers of fiberglass. Um, I chose this end to be the inside end. This end is kind of frayed and I didn't want to have a problem when I overlap, uh, when I overlap in the, uh, for the first layer. Um, cutting fiberglass, you can cut it on a bias or 45 degree angle. That is a little bit stronger, uh, but I think it's mostly overkill for what we're doing. Um, and uh, so it, it really does waste a lot of uh, material. Uh, but uh, anyhow, that is a way to make uh, the fiberglass even stronger. Okay. Yep. We're going to actually lay this up. Um, I'm using uh, West Systems. They're 105 hardener, uh, I mean the 206 hardener and the 105 resin. Uh, I've used it for a long, long time, uh, and it seems to just work every single time. Um, so what I've done is I measured out the uh, hardener and the resin on a digital scale, and uh, uh, this is five times more than this. This is the hardener. Um, and the easiest way to do it was to weigh is to weigh it. Specific gravity is the same of, for both materials. Now, I'm going to take and mix this. Actually, I'm going to do it like this and put the larger volume of resin into the hardener and we're going to stir uh, be sure to mix epoxy well if you don't what you're going to end up with is areas that are pure resin and areas that are pure hardener the hardener will go off by itself eventually but the uh, resin won't. So we want to mix this real well. I'm scraping the sides of the container. I'm getting down into the corner with this uh, uh, my stirry stick, which is a model airplane propeller. Works great. Um, but we're going to mix this up and do a good job of it. And then we're going to pour it out in this tray. Remember, whatever you leave in the container, uh, you can't use. <laughs> All right. So we now have um, our epoxy brushes. Chip brushes, easiest thing to use. Get them at Harbor Freight. I think I paid three dollars for a hundred. Uh, this is a one-inch brush. The wider, the uh, uh, the bigger the mandrel, the bigger the brush. Uh, so you can get the epoxy on uh, and so forth. All right. Well, here we go. I'm just going, and I'm going to put a lot of epoxy on this first layer. I hope people can see. I know you can't really see uh, the contrast of this, uh, but uh, you'll notice that I'm starting from the center and moving out, and I'm going to continue to put a lot of epoxy on this first layer. And I'll do that till I can come around. To where I started, I'm going to put me a little extra there and make sure that that edge is down. 
and then I'm going to quickly roll over that seam. All right. That's the first layer. There should be enough epoxy on the layer below, our initial first layer, to where all you've got to do now is just squeegee this fiberglass into the epoxy that's already on there. And again, I'm trying to work it from one end to the other so I keep the fiberglass stretched. And here we come up to the end. And it appears that there was enough epoxy because I'm getting a lot of epoxy through this last or third layer. All right. That's done. Now, let's get rid of the epoxy. What? Well, we can't get rid of it all because it's saturated in all through the uh, uh, fiberglass. And you can see that there is a, uh, I don't know, you can see the shine on it. It's full of epoxy. So I'm going to go and I'm going to find the seam, which is going to be right there. And right below it, I'm going to start wiping the epoxy off. And what I'm doing, too, is I'm stretching the fiberglass. See the bubble that's created? I'm going to stretch that right out of it. This is tightening the uh, uh, fiberglass. Be sure you always work in the same direction. Because if you go against the roll, against the way it's wound, you're going to end up with one heck of a mess. All right, so... We're coming back around to the seam. I'm going to do this a little bit more gently on the seam so I don't unhook a whole lot of fiberglass from the weave. And then I'm going to keep doing this. Until I get this tube as dry as I can get it and as tightly on this mandrel as possible. All right. There you have it. Step one, step one, the initial layout. Step two. All right, now, this already has the uh, uh, step one fiberglass tube on it. Um, and so what we're going to do now, we gotta, we're going to put a gel coat on top of this. Um, but there may have been some trash or, you know, when you, you left a little lint uh, on the mandrel, on, on the layup and so forth. This is 220 grit paper and the only thing you're going to do is lightly go around the tube well, this is a shorter tube i need to move my pen a little further in so it doesn't come out there we go uh but all you're trying to do here is knock off anything rough on the outside surface now when you get around to the seam you want to spend a little bit more time and get those little light, small hairs gone uh, and so forth. But really, the only thing you're, you're not looking to sand anything really other than just trash that's in the, uh, in the mandrel. Um, after I sand, I generally uh, will go back and clean the, uh, the mandrel. with alcohol. So that's the first part of that step. Now, bring in the uh, epoxy again. And what we're going to do here is we're going to saturate it again. We're going to put epoxy back on it. 
this is actually going to become a gel coat. And we're going to put a lot of epoxy on again. And completely cover the layup. All right. Well, we've gone completely around it. And so it is completely covered and soaked in epoxy. I'm going to work this epoxy some. Uh, so I'm working it into any voids, any whole little pin holes or anything like that. I'm trying to work that epoxy into that. All right. Now, I dried my brush off. I think we're through with the epoxy. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and take off as much epoxy as I can get off with this brush. And you notice I'm doing it slowly and pulling it in one direction. You'll also notice that I'm accumulating uh, more epoxy in the brush. So I'll dry that brush off again and keep doing this until I get a nice little sheen across it. And after I get most of the epoxy off, I'm going to lightly go back and brush this till it's all shiny. Okay. There's step two. I don't know whether you can see the uh, shine on this tube or not but uh, there we go there was a little shine anyhow that's what you want uh, for that now let's bring another one up this one is it step that was step two this is step three right here uh, it now has the shine on it uh, from the, uh, see the shine, uh, it now has, uh, that, and what we're going to do a lot of this you wouldn't have to do if you're not making a scale tube or one, uh, I'm going to put some water in here and I'm going to use 320 sandpaper wet. So what I'm going to do is wet sand this tube. You'd be amazed at how well it sands um, on the mandrel. Going around it once and then dry it off and let's see. It's real easy to do. You know when to stop because as soon as you take the gloss off of the surface, you're done. Uh, it also will highlight uh, holes uh, or, or low spots. Um, and uh, you just want to work it down with that. Um, now, once you do that, then... Uh, I use a primer. This is a sealer, not a primer. The surface is so smooth now because the surface really is uh, epoxy um, that you don't really have much at all to fill. But you can use a filler, uh, a filling primer, or in my case, I just use a, uh, a sealer because the surface is so good. And this is what the finished tube will look like it's ready for painting uh, or doing anything that you need to do to it okay we'll get rid of that so step three is to sand is to sand out the uh, tube okay now we're at the fun part 
the tube is made. It's been uh, sanded. You've got a nice tube here. You maybe have it primed. Well, how do I get it off? Oh, gee, it is so it is so difficult. It just slides. It's because of that uh, wax paper. It may be tight on there. You may want to slide it down and it gets tighter and tighter at one end. Well, turn it over. Try sliding it off the other end. OK, um, it will come off. And when it does come off, there's the mandrel, and there's the tube. Uh, you do, by the way, if you had taped the ends to the mandrel, you do want to remove that tape. Um, uh, it's just like, uh, I don't have another example set up, but uh, anyhow, so um, you end up with a tube like this, uh, getting it out. It's very easy. I've already got one set up. Dowel rod. Masking tape turned on its back. Real difficult. Simply lay that, lay that masking tape into the uh, wax paper on the inside. And start spinning. Let's see if you can see this. And out it comes. And that's all we're doing is just turning it, turning the wax paper. And there you go. There's the wax paper uh, that's uh, out. And there's your tube. Um, let's see. I'm about at the end. Uh, there was, uh, let's see, remove the wax paper. Um, now, on this mandrel, guess what? The tube just slides right back on. So you can... Uh, uh, do whatever you want to do to it. The perfect example is this scale tube, which uh, went back on the uh, number, uh, the first mandrel that we actually laid up, and I was able to work on it. I've got support. It slides. I can make it stop sliding by putting a little piece of tape over it. Uh, I can bring it down, and if you see these cutouts and so forth that are in here, the support for those cutouts was this mandrel, so I didn't crush the tube, all right? So that's another really nice thing about uh, using uh, this technique and using wax paper as your barrier instead of a wax spray. Um, cutting the uh, tubes. Um, I usually use, and I'll put it back on the mandrel to do that, but a, a report cover and I'll slice a piece off. Uh, then take that, wrap it around a little piece of masking tape on it. Now I've got a straight uh, edge that goes all the way around the tube. Bear in mind, I'm still inside the, the man. I've still got the mandrel in here, so I've still got a lot of support and control over this tube. Okay, this might have been easier to show you uh, with using a piece of white paper. I like the plastic because once you cut it off pretty close, just use sandpaper and sand it down to the plastic. The plastic will stop the sandpaper from eroding the tube even more. Because you can precisely control this, the best way to measure the diameter of a tube, and I wish judges 
would figure this one out. The most accurate way is to get the circumference get the circumference of the tube, which I did there. And the circumference divided by pi is equal to the diameter. So on this particular tube, it's 95.17 millimeters in circumference divided by pi means that this tube right here is 30.29 millimeters in diameter. I don't think you get the same results. You get close. But that reading was 29.98. This averages the tube itself. All right. Well, um, I think that's about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back. We got about uh, five minutes left. I'm going to switch back to me. And let's see if we can answer any of these questions. Uh, how many uh, adjustable mandrels have you made? I probably have about 14, 15 of them. Um, some mandrels uh, I've made, they're the same size. This is a 25 millimeter. Uh, I had another 25 millimeter around here. Um, this one's made with a copper pipe. Uh, the other one was PVC. Uh, this big old long, long mandrel right here for a piston tube. It's got a steel rod in it, but it was uh, just basically a piece of piano wire that size. It's not a tool steel. Okay, what is the pot life? Working time of that epoxy? Uh, 30 to 45 minutes. And that's why I chose the slower, uh, I always prefer to make things slower, uh, to take my time. Uh, I don't want to get rushed when, even when I'm gluing, uh, I use deep G flex 24 hour glue. The West systems is 24 hour with the slow, uh, hardener on it. I don't want to run out of time. I don't want to get pressured. Uh, cause when I get pressured, I make mistakes. So, uh, the pot life is, uh, uh, and as you saw, I put it out into a tray, uh, just a wax paper folded up tray, uh, so that it uh, wouldn't sit uh, in a large pot. And that's when it begins to uh, go off quicker. Okay, uh, let's see. Answered, answered. Uh, do you have a cheat sheet of tubes from Home Depot, Lowe's, and their mapping to common body tubes? uh body sizes no i don't uh because it may not necessarily be lows that i go to uh i mean i've got dowel rods in here uh i've got some carbon rods uh you know and they may be the right diameter um out in my uh, utility room uh you know there may be a a broom a broomstick in there that's straight and i'll and it's the perfect diameter well I might sacrifice the uh, uh, the balloon, uh, I mean the broom, to make that happen. Um, so the the core can come from anything as long as it's straight, strong, and won't and won't deform. Those are the only requirements. By the way, it does take a lot of masking tape, uh, depending on how much, particularly with the with the big one. Uh, big tubes take a lot. Uh, so, all right. Let's see. I'm down to, uh, have you tried to use polyethylene or any other type of plastic wrap rather than wax paper? No, I haven't. Um, and uh, the wax paper that I use, uh, I think my friend Dr. Bob can tell you that I have drilled into his head. This is the best wax paper 
it has the most wax on it. So I, I prefer the wax paper. Uh, I know that epoxy won't stick to plastic, but it certainly doesn't want to stick to wax. Um, so this was so easy to come out. I have not tried anything else. It just worked too well. Uh, all right. Uh, does wax paper have an upside and a downside? Shouldn't. There should be equal amounts of uh, wax on both sides. And again, the quality, you can get some really cheap wax paper. And yeah, I bet there might be a spray of wax paper, of, of wax on one side and nothing on the other side. But cut right wax paper uh, has wax on both sides. It burnishes down well. The wax sticks to itself so well. And like I said, it may not be 100% perfect with no holes that's why i said the minimum number of layers is two layers of uh wax paper and that keeps it off of the mandrel makes it so it can slide and come off as well um do you ever use smaller body tubes as the core for the mandrel perhaps phenolic or fiberglass sure This is a, a very strong uh, uh, inner tube that I made. Sure, as long as it's strong and won't distort, this is any anything will work as a core for this. Um, but that's the key. So yes, uh, I would. Uh, I have used uh, other tubes to make uh, uh, different tubes for other things. Uh, most of the time, if I'm making a coupler or something like that, it'll be made on the same mandrel that the airframe was made on, because based on that, I can deduct three layers of wax paper off of the uh, layup and make a coupler that will fit inside and slide perfectly inside uh, another, uh, the outer tube. Uh, that was... Um, if I can, I can't find my other tube. Oh, here it is. That's how that was done. And that's a coupler that fits. And so when I uh, uh, attach the nose cone to the airframe, this is the coupler that I'm going to use to do that. All right. Uh, well, I think they're telling me that that is it. I think I've gotten them all. How do you attach the wax paper to the mandrel? I think I answered that masking tape. Okay. I think that, uh-oh, more questions up at the top. Uh, how visible is the seam in the finished product? It is not uh, visible at all. If you uh, sand it out uh, uh, nicely before you put the gel coat on. Are we going to ignore the Saturn 1B looming in the background? Uh, that Saturn 1B is kind of special. John Persley made that, it made a 3D print. That was the last print that he ever made. And uh, so there's the, the tail on that Saturn 1B. Uh, I intend on finishing it for him. That was my job. He hired me to uh, paint it and uh, so forth as an example. And I intend on doing that. And then we'll auction it at a NARAM one year. Uh, does the width of the masking tape matter? Yes. Uh, the smaller the tube, uh, the small, the uh, thinner or the not as wide tape. The, wi the wider tapes uh, are for bigger um, uh, mandrels. Uh, generally, it's the, the width of the tape is the diameter of the tube. Uh, and that keeps you out, makes it easier. Uh, what were you using to rub across the wax paper to get the edge to lay flat? A burnishing tool, a dowel rod, anything. This just happens to be fancy and it, it works very well. Um, where do you get the fiberglass? That's a good question. Will Gilly, that's a good uh, question. We actually have a fiberglass distributor here in High Point. Um, uh, uh, Coggin 
uh, Thayer uh, is the, the name of the company. Uh, if you'll uh, email me afterwards, uh, Jim Filler uh, has had some experience with them because they are in my uh, neighborhood. Uh, then I do too. Uh, they have all kinds of fiberglass uh, available. They are commercial fiberglass and composite uh, provider to the furniture industry. And that's why um, uh, the uh, company is based here. Okay. Um, I think that is it. I hope you all have gained some uh, knowledge and I hope you'll try it. Uh, it's a lot easier to use wax paper than it is to use spray wax. And it's much easier to get the results you want if, in fact, you, you make your own mandrels cheaply. Anyhow, thank you all. And I will switch back and say goodbye.